Publishing a podcast is much more than just simply recording an audio and sharing it on some kind of podcasting network. What I want to accomplish here in today's tutorial is to show you some of the steps that are necessary to produce a podcast that actually gets listeners, that generates new sales for your consulting services or your marketing services, and actually puts you out there in a marketplace in a meaningful way. Now, you can adopt a lot of these things as services you deliver to your clients or in your own marketing system. Now, of course, this is not a comprehensive view of what I do. It's a 15-minute presentation to give you an idea of what happens behind the scenes with every episode. Now, if you'll pay close attention, you'll discover ways to shortcut and save you time, as well as to create topic ideas for a regular podcast. One of the worst things that can happen is you can get burned out on a podcast. You can get, run out of topics. You can miss the audience match that's necessary for your audience to get the results that they're looking for. I'm going to share you, show you behind the scenes. This is not the only way of doing it, but I'm Justin Hitt with Ad Briefing Copywriting Tips. Uh, don't mind the background. Don't mind the messy desktop. What we've got here all started with a LinkedIn news. So right here on the side of LinkedIn, and, and a lot of folks ask, where do you get your content ideas? Now, I produce evergreen content. I would be more popular if I had news-oriented content. So I'm going to show you the more popular way because a lot of folks out there that are selling marketing services, selling copywriting services, or any type of complex service can benefit from the, uh, the daily news approach, but it often uh, requires a lot of extra work. But again, it works very well. So we start with LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a little sidebar that says LinkedIn News. These are stories that LinkedIn has cultivated as being important on the LinkedIn platform. Doesn't mean it's important anywhere else. Doesn't mean anybody else actually cares. But in my case, I did a, I saw this here where the Washington Post digital subscriber base is stalling and digital ad revenue is reducing. And that's the problem that they face. And that's a problem many of my publishing clients face. And their response was later down in this little article where um, the CEO, Fred Ryan, concerned about low productivity. So I'm making the association between drop in subscribership to uh, productivity. Uh, they're actually monitoring badge swipes and return to office type elements. So I'm, I'm looking at the threads of current media. My audience is interested in uh, instead of trading dollars for hours, gaining residual income through providing some kind of intellectual property or some kind of service that has a back-end revenue source. Washington Post digital subscribers is very similar to perhaps you having a membership site or a digital product that sets up somebody to buy a more complex service. So this article is a match. So number one is you need to make sure that you find newsworthy content that is a match to your audience base. Now, if you were working with a client who sells supplements or sells health memberships, this second article here would be a historic drop in U.S. life expectancy. That would be a more relevant article. We don't really care about how many people or readers that are on these articles, only that LinkedIn has pointed them out. So we're essentially making LinkedIn our virtual assistant to go find us topics. And then we pick a topic that's relevant to our particular product or service or the particular client. And then we do what's called the newscaster method. The newscaster method was, I think, invented by Frank Kern. And it's a way of wrapping your idea around the news. So I don't know Fred Ryan. I'm not intimately involved with the Washington Post. I do know that it's a digital publisher as well as a newspaper. And I read this article about the frustrations they're mounting at the Washington Post because they're losing subscribers. Um, I'm associating this with the concern of many of my clients who have some kind of newsletter or publication uh, that they're concerned about losing subscribers. So I'm setting up the match in my content so that the podcast becomes a bridge to the uh, outcome or the um, the decision I want them to the reader to make. So in this case, I have some specific topics such as productivity to work from. So returning to office is a productivity uh, concern for a lot of people. And I started an outline. So I have, and I've, I'm going to hold this up here really quick because I do a lot of my outlines on paper. I have an outline right here 
on paper that is the problem, the pain, the solution I'm advocating, and then some kind of call to action. The call to action is always tied to a special report, a consultation, some kind of next step. So in this case, we're talking about um, that that it's really wrong for this guy to be looking at whether somebody's in an office or not. Because for when it comes to reporters, you could have two reporters, one in the office, one outside the office, both of them meeting deadline, both of them being equally productive. The difference is, is that one reporter didn't have to sit in traffic during a commute. Now, my audience doesn't want to sit in a traffic during a commute. A lot of you copywriters, marketers, business development professionals, you're in this business because you can work remote, because you can uh, produce your content from anywhere in the world. You can write articles, write sales letters, write lead generation pieces. You don't have to be physically in an office and it gives you some uh, flexibility. So that's why we're, again, using the podcast, the bridge. Now, it could be a podcast, could be a video log. It could be a tutorial such as we're saying setting up right now. But again, the key is relevant news media, news coverage. I'm borrowing credibility from the Washington Post. I'm borrowing Fred Ryan as, a, as an individual, and I'm connecting them with ideas and concepts relevant to my organization. So peak performance is part of what my organization teaches. Outcome management is important. Does it matter more that you produce five proposals a week or five client deliverables a week? The proposals are not as important as the client deliverables until the point you have no clients to deliver for. So we're talking about balance here. How do you understand the balance? Again, I wrote that down in the little page here and set up the interview. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the article. So I went over here and read the article. It takes 10, 15 minutes at the most to do this preparation. I built my little outline. And then I go into my Spreaker tool, and Spreaker is what I'm using here, and I record the presentation. OK, after recording the presentation, I give it a title. I want to use a headline here. Now, I didn't. This is not the best best headline, but I'm calling out individual listeners who want results. And then what matters more? Now, I'm using keywords here, meetings and, re, and, and uh, return to office, because, again, I'm bridging into the content, which is when this CEO found that the digital subscriber base was falling, uh, they blamed low productivity in the newsroom. Now, high, what is high productivity in the newsroom? Okay, so that's some of the things we're going to answer in the podcast. But again, you go through the podcast yourself. So if you were also marketing, providing marketing services to membership sites, newsletter subscribe, uh, publishers, and other periodic publications, this article would be a good match. But maybe you're going to cover the metrics associated with digital subscriber base. And actually, um, why invent anything? Gabriel down here uh, actually wrote here, um, you know, which publishers are not facing, uh, you know, customers have so many choices. The key is, and, and see, now they deliberately pitch their product, but the key is you want to bridge with your uh, podcast, not add to because we're amplifying the news element as a credibility builder. We're writing around that news element, and then we are going to publish. Now, some people might say, hey, look, should I just go ahead and write an article on uh, LinkedIn? Yes, no, it limits your audience, I believe. What we're going to do here is we're going to write, we're going to record our podcast. We're going to record the show notes or write the show notes. We're going to run that through some kind of Grammarly or Hemingway app. I, I actually use both because uh, I want an eighth to ninth grade reading level. And I do have a little challenge with these opening sentences, but I think that's important for the context of the article that we're we're putting the credibility up front. Now, after the, the it's published and after it is uh, out there on the on the rest of the world, let me get a little thing out of here for privacy purposes. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to write this little excerpt. So we're going to take our show notes and we're going to excerpt from our show notes. Now, what's the fastest way um, to excerpt from the show notes? Well, we're going to take a lead paragraph out. We'll come down here. We'll just say social media. Yeah, I consider all these platforms social media. I don't really use half of them, but following digital subscriber counts uh, calls, look at, 
this sounds like a simple cause and effect, but it is a mistake. Here's why. Okay, see, so see what I just did here. I took my lead paragraph and then I have some kind of call to action. I go over here to my podcast. So this is the published podcast. 16 minutes, all my podcasts and things are 15 to 16 minutes because I'm just going to send a few key ideas. I'm going to copy the link, paste it right here. And now I've got a, a segment to put in my LinkedIn. So I'm going to go back to LinkedIn and I'm going to post. I got to remember to get that F in there because you don't want to be without your Fs. Now, my Spreaker, which is the platform I recommend, but other platforms are available. Every podcast posted there syndicates to multiple other platforms, which gives me a, you know, basically going to, you know, write it once and it show up many places. And so here I did a little grammar check. I might want to add some, some little uh, hashtags. Okay, now I got, I'm, I've got my updated text. I'm going to come back here and point. By the way, the tool I'm using right here is called Atom. You can use any text tool, but the key is I store all this information in text so I can keep recycling it. So I'm going to click post. And so I've recorded the podcast. A lot of people think they're done there. But now I'm going to promote the podcast and I'm going to build associations in the different platforms. Now, this is not something that I personally do after I record a podcast. Sometimes I'll sit down and record 10, 15 podcasts in a day, schedule them out over the next couple of weeks. All I've done is the headlines and the descriptions. Um, and then I, I write up a little bit of text and somebody else posts it all because it's, it is time consuming. But ultimately, um, if you don't promote the podcast, nobody will ever see it. It's just the way things work. Now you can see who's viewing my profile, 38 people. Impressions on my post, 94. I don't have a lot of high traffic here. If I wanted to spread this a little further, I would then go or have somebody go to Facebook, Instagram, create cover images, um, do all kinds of other other uh, supplemental materials. But I, I don't need to do that. I can give this file to somebody. I can give them a link to the post. I've referenced the article in here. So we've got the we got this little reference section down here. And they can go and excerpt. So another uh, way to get the promotion side of it, which is also a way to get the content side of it, is right here. Frustrations mount at the Washington Post as its business struggles. Okay. While digital subscriptions and devil stagnate, the company's on the pace to lose money this year. And looking in the wrong place to fix it. And so now what I've done, again, I hijacked the article. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm showing you how this is very natural. Now you're saying, you might be saying, well, Justin, you just, you just plagiarized the headline and you redirected their link. Well, this is just a draft. So frustrations mount at the Washington Post. I don't need those caps in there as its business struggles. Yeah, I could say as digital subscriptions and advertising revenue stagnate, I'm get, I'm getting it on paper first, then I'm editing it. Um, this is a long sentence. I could put a quick exclamation point here, change this to another system. Blank, and they're and they are looking in the wrong place to fix it. I put a period here. There we go. Okay, so now I've got another piece of content to promote the podcast. So what's important here is I am not inventing topics to cover. I find something that is of, of relevance to my audience. I read commentary around that. I summarize the commentary in a form of a bridge to connect with the products and services that I offer. So my podcast is about gaining greater productivity and the disconnect that managers often have between a problem they see, which in this case is lower digital subscriptions, 
and the uh, res the, the the actual thing that influences the outcome that we're looking for, I'm setting up in the audio recording, which is 15 minutes long, much longer than the show notes. I'm setting up my report, the outcome management system, which shows you how to manage the outcome of things rather than managing the activity of things so that you get greater results and more consistent productivity. I'm also promoting peak performance. You can see down here on the bottom here, if you want to achieve peak performance, you're in the right place. Join us at such and such. So I'm making the show notes and the podcast a lead generation tool like we discuss in various reports that I have. Um, and then I'm, I'm kind of giving them a, a benefit. I'm saying this is a challenge your manhood right here. Do more than like and subscribe. Do more than the like. Okay, so the like and subscribe jive and ha to, in order to have a more fulfilling career today. So I'm speaking to my audience. So it doesn't stop here. From this point forward, I can have a, an administrative assistant do the work, but there could be 30 or 40 of these little excerpts. There can be show notes published on the on the website. This is Inside Strategic Relations. The show notes can get published on the website. The the podcast can get cataloged in my podcast uh, episode numbers. All of that stuff keeps going. So if you can focus on recording the podcast and making the connection, you can have your team focus on everything else and actually drive out all the rest of the steps that are necessary in order to get a promotion. If I stop at just recording the podcast, unless I've already got tens or 20,000 subscribers, I'm not going to get the movement towards a lead that I would get doing what I just described here. So I hope this has been a very useful, quick little tip here. I, and, and I'm going to summarize really quick. You're connecting with existing news and relevance to your audience. You're expanding on a topic as a bridge to your products or services. Your podcast itself has lead generation elements to uh, produce an opt-in. From that opt-in on your website or elsewhere, you're going to be able to qualify that individual a little bit more to get a consultation, to get a, a report, or to get something in their hands so that they know that you're the the service provider that they want. You're storing all of this content somewhere so that you can have an assistant or a marketing coordinator go out there and keep that message up. So let's say I have eight social media posts or short form uh, posts. I would schedule those out over the next eight weeks. And then when I record something else tomorrow, I, I would schedule that out over the next eight weeks or the next 10 weeks. And then what ends up is you have this layering. I would try to take the best performing a uh, short form copy and try to drill it down into pay per click advertising. So I could turn this first sentence into a pay per click by doing this. Uh, click here for uh, insights to grow. So I probably want to say to achieve, uh, to increase productivity, to increase productivity and then i send them to the post here so we're recycling our content which which i have a report on doing that too because that's that's so important and we are getting the most use out of the content but can you see how all you've got to do is the first part make the connection the association understand the audience tie these two together get that first piece of material out there. Now, later you can trans transcribe the uh, podcast and now you have a special report. You can take two or three podcasts that are on the same topic and turn them into a t tutorial. Uh, again, this is about producing value for your, your audience and doing so in a way that generates leads for your business. Now, I show you how I do these things because I want to make sure you, you know this is not impossible, but I will help you. I want you to understand you can't be just like a freelance copywriter doing this too because it's going to burn up a lot of time. So when you when, notice when I logged in at the website, I have this courses. So everything that I produce is around one of these courses. Um, now, there's I have about 100 courses and they're all coded with these fancy little numbers and I'll use the, the code so I can collect the material and bring it all together. 
But the key here is my goal is to generate an inquiry that's going to do a project. When that project comes along, I can gather all the materials that got them in the door and use it as back end to the value of doing business with me over somebody else. But that all those back end materials don't exist if I don't have a process for doing the podcast. Now, if you'd like a process for doing the podcast, which includes editorial cycles, idea generation, uh, the ability to to get these things out there, syndicate it. And within minutes, a lot of times this stuff will be in the Google search engines. Um, not always, but within minutes, it's very often in the search engines. I just recorded this today. We'll see see what we get when we do an exact title search. But I want you to also understand that you, we're we're connecting the dots. So let's say your audience is a, is a remote office person and they want to work remote. You can actually come in here and expand your topic as you move away from the Washington Post example into um, what does McKinsey say about returning to the office? Um, you know, what does a Harvard Business Review say about? And then we just do the same thing again. We take the Harvard Business Review article. We create a podcast about it. The podcast bridges from the article to the offer. And then we generate a lead with the podcast by offering them additional information or the ability to ask questions. And then we get an appointment. That's marketing. That's how we do marketing. So I hope this all makes sense. I'm Justin Hit with Ad Briefing's Copywriting Tips. Um, and I just wanted to put together a quick tutorial for you. It doesn't really matter what systems you use. It doesn't really matter what platform you're on. Uh, the key is, is that we're creating art, content artifacts that we can use to market the business over and over and over again. We're then syndicating these topics into different media. And then from the different media, we're driving everybody back to our website to join our newsletter or everybody back to the website contact page to ask a question which then puts them in our, our uh, CRM system so that we can follow up with inquirers. Again, if you have any questions, ask the questions below. Visit www.adbriefings.co.uk and either join the newsletter if you're not already a newsletter subscriber or go to the contact page and ask your questions because your questions is what drives our content. This is a subscriber-supported publication. We have no advertisers. Revenue from but we do send content. Um, we pay some revenue from there, but also.